You don't come to Sound Off 60 at Jack Daniels without the bling. And what you're looking at is a Super Bowl ring that belongs to former Saints defensive back Mike McKenzie. There's some rocks. Yeah, there it is. Cute. The Absolutely. 2006 Super Bowl championship ring where, the, of course, the Saints beat the Indianapolis Colts. On a big play, ironically enough, by a defensive back, Tracy Porter. Yeah. Intercepts Peyton, goes all the way. That, yeah. That's got to be pretty cool. Homegrown yeah. from Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah. Port Allen. Yeah. You put Port all Allen the all the way on the map. On the map. On the map. Uh, it certainly uh, will go down in the history uh, as one of the greatest players in uh, Super Bowl oh, history. No question. Now, Mike, let me ask you. His guest, his guest Brian, tried to buy that ring from you? I've got a lot of offers. I've got a lot of offers for the ring. I said, uh, obviously, I need to pull out the stunt double because I get yeah, asked all go. kinds of questions all the time. Yeah. Is that the actual ring? Yeah. People just figure, uh, well, because yeah. because New Orleans is such an awesome city and the state of Louisiana supports us uh, so well. Every time I'm out and about, you know, I take the ring off and I, right. you know, I show it to people, touch it, let them That's try great, it on yeah. because. Uh, uh, we have a unique, you know, bond with our fans here just due to the circumstances no, of, of the past that's brought us all the way through. No, let's, let's go back to that. When, when, and like I said, you bridged that gap. When y'all were stuck in a high school in San Antonio and didn't know where you were going from week yeah. to week, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, New Orleans was pretty uncertain coming back there. I mean, and few of y'all were actually from New Orleans. I mean, you were living there at the time. Where, where, what was the mood like on that team? Was like, man, I got to look for me another team, or was it yeah. we're going to ride this out? All those things came up because nat naturally being in the I mean, NFL. You're human. Being yeah. in the NFL, you just figure, I mean, this is a, you know, multi-billion dollar uh, yeah, industry. We just figured that uh, you would have hoped that things would have been smoother uh, in reference to, you know, we dealt with the same things yeah. that the average person dealt with, you know, being relocated, trying to mm -hmm. find a place to stay, trying to uh, figure out where you're going to put the kids in school, right. how long are we going to be yeah. here for. So we had a lot of questions on top of uh, the added fact of having to go out and prepare and perform. And quiet has kept. The greatest thing about that season was the camaraderie of the players yeah. because we spent so much time together uh, in hotel rooms, in meeting rooms, at practice. Uh, it had a true feel of a, a college season. Yeah. We spent so much time together because no one wanted to be cramped up <laughs> yeah. in a hotel room. So even when you left, you didn't, because it brought you back to the harsh realities yeah. like, you know, you're away from home you're right. and you're spending all these endless uh, hours and time <laughs> in a hotel. So for everybody, we went through the same, the same growing right. pains. Mike, the one question I've got to ask before you leave, the three of us debated well, I have for quite some, more. some time. I know, but the three of us <laughs> debated for quite some time. The interception that took us home, we, Rick made the excuse that Peyton Manning had a bad throw. As a former DB to a DDB, was that just a great break on the ball? That's a great play that shows you listen, listen close, Rick. what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Because he recognized is. what was coming, right? That, that that's all, all right, what it was. Right. If, on, if, no. if not preparation, because Peyton Manning, he knew where his target was he going knew. to be. He dropped back like clockwork, because uh -huh. it's, it's basically an unstoppable play. Because he's pulling away from the defender. There's, there's no question about it. It's a five-yard little in route. He doesn't run it like a slant. It's right. like an in route. Tracy Porter has seen the route previously in the game. So he already knew up under the circumstance that it was a short yard, and uh, Tracy met the play. Big I, I hate play. to interrupt you, Mike, but again, play. Mr. Guidry got his facts wrong. My point was Peyton Manning w did not throw the ball incorrectly. It was the receiver who was from New Orleans, can't Wait remember his minute, name all of a sudden. Uh -oh. He didn't really uh -oh. fight for position. Reggie, What's his name? I'm, I'm can you correct you, it? Can Reg, you correct Reggie Wayne, Reggie Wayne is a big, 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 big fan 
president of the city of New Orleans. Yes, he is. But at the same time, him being a, a Miami alumni, yes. that was a great defensive play. Oh yeah, great defensive play. Okay. There's no question no, about that. You can't fault the, oh, yeah. the quarterback. You can't fault the receiver because on that particular play, the receiver knows he has to because if he runs in there, he's going to run dead into the exactly. linebacker. So it is a small area that that receiver knows he he's has to stay in, in yeah. not to get his job broke. Okay. Right. You didn't I'm convince me. Guys. You didn't convince okay. me, but let's move on. <laughs> All right. He's the expert, but he still didn't convince me. Look. Come on, Rick. Scooter brought up a point about, about when, when the regime of not only Sean Payton, but Mickey Loomis. I mean, yeah. big factor in the Saints GM turnaround. of the year. That exactly. Year. Yeah. Yeah. In Payton's book, he clearly, clearly stated the fact that the player they had to get, and they were convinced that the guy that was going to turn this franchise around was Drew Brees. Our conversation would not be complete to give your thoughts on what Drew Brees did while you were there and the short time y'all overlapped and what kind of man and quarterback and leader Drew Brees is yeah. for that team and that's it. Well, the biggest thing about Drew Brees is he leads by example. He's one of the first guys in. He's one of the last guys out. And all throughout my time uh, with the team, when I had my injuries, I was there very early. It was yeah. never a moment in time that I was at the facility and didn't see Drew there. And naturally, yeah. uh, you know, I worked late as well. Drew was always there in the weight room. Drew was a big leader, leading the quarterbacks. When it came to the offseason workout, he's leading the workout so him being a leader on the field as well as off the field and the the amount of contributions that we get from different players yeah. in our locker room in the community he's a big catalyst of a lot of things that you see yeah. uh, from the players in the community so I can't say enough uh, great things about yeah. Drew Brees because he leads by example and when you see his work ethic it speaks volumes I yeah. mean because I've only played with three uh, quarterbacks in my uh, professional Brett career. Favre. Yeah. Brett Favre. Brett <laughs> Favre, Aaron Brooks, yeah. Yeah. and Drew Brees has been the starting quarterbacks. And without any question, uh, Drew Brees' work ethic, you know, not only on the field, yeah. but in the weight room. That's what, you know, impressed me most about yeah. him was his work ethic. And obviously me having a lot of injuries, a lot of things that Drew did in reference to strengthening his arm because the injury, that rotator cuff yeah. injury. That's a serious, yeah, that can be serious. I mean, you don't, you don't come back off of that type of injury uh, throwing with that type of accuracy that Drew Brees yeah. throws the ball with. So uh, it's all about his work ethic. Amazing quarterback. Amazing. No wait, 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 wait. There's kind of a there's a little bit of a love hate relationship in this state I think with and a lot of it goes back to Katrina mm -hmm. as a player what were the feelings and what was your relationship with Tom Benson I mean as a player uh you, I couldn't ask for much more. Uh, mm -hmm. Tom Benson in that organization was one of the biggest reasons that I made my way from Green Bay yeah. to New Orleans. And, you know, Mickey, you know, assuring me that, you know, once we got through a, a full year, uh, it worked out. I got, yeah. I received a new contract. So I'm forever, you know, grateful to the city of New Orleans for Great. embracing me, but more importantly, the organization for wanting me. Yeah. Can I get one quick question? Then? Well, sure. let's do this. You got one more in you? I, I we're going to do a short one. How about that? Many questions. We're going to take a short pause. When we come back, we'll wrap <laughs> it up with Mike McKenzie, former defensive back of the New Orleans Saints, because we want to get into this, the, the current state of the NFL yeah. and the collective bargaining agreement and the lockout. We got a lockout, guys. We'll get into that more with Big Mike when we come back. Right here at Sound Off 60.